the important organic compound formaldehyde has the chemical formula H2CO. Each carbon contributes six, four electrons, each oxygen contributes six, and the hydrogens each contribute one, so we have a total of 12 electrons for this system. The way that we can satisfy the octet and duet rules simultaneously is to have a carbon-oxygen double bond. Now, types of molecules that have this C double bound to an O, we call this particular group a carbonyl group. And when we have a carbonyl group with hydrogen, hydrocarbons on the side, we call this an aldehyde. So this is the simplest of the aldehydes from aldehyde. If we replace the hydrogen atom that used to be here from the formaldehyde molecule with a CH3 group, we get a new compound called acetaldehyde. This CH3 group, it comes up so often that we give it its own name. We call it a methyl group. So we can say that we've substituted a hydrogen with a methyl group. We still have our carbonyl group here, our C double bond O. And because directly attached to the carbonyl group, we have a hydrogen atom, we still have one left, we still have an aldehyde. So this is acetaldehyde. To form the lowest structure for this compound, we note that we have two carbon atoms, each of which contributes four electrons, so that gives us eight, six more from oxygen, plus four from the four hydrogens which gives us a total of 18 electrons. To satisfy the duet rules for the hydrogens and the octet rule for the carbons, we need to allocate the electrons as we've shown here, still keeping the C double bond O for the carbonyl group. That's a requirement for any compound that is an aldehyde. Here we have an interesting compound, which is called ketene, and it has a total of 16 electrons. In a certain way, we can see right away, it's a 16 electron system. It bears a certain resemblance to carbon dioxide, and we notice that we have C double bond over here, and if we replace the oxygen that used to be over here with a CH2 group, which has the same number of electrons, we can kind of see the family resemblance between ketene and carbon dioxide. Yet another 16 electron system is a new compound called alene. We notice that it has three carbons. If we have a three carbon unit where the carbons are, are all connected by single bonds, we use the term propyl for those. When they're connected by double bonds, or some combination of single bonds and double bonds, we use the term allylic. So here we have a parent compound as a neutral species, which we call allene. When we have compounds of just carbon and hydrogen, and there is a carbon-carbon double bond, we call these types of compounds alkenes. The simplest of the alkenes is this compound, acetylene, which is a gas that also acts as a plant hormone. So it's the only plant hormone that has the physical property of being a gas. It is widely used to take unripe vegetables, you will put them into a large container, pump ethylene gas in, and then you can ripen them up. It allows us to pick certain types of vegetables before they're ripened, transport them far away, and then ripen them up before eating them. Anyway, so this particular system has a total of, so we have two carbons, that's eight, four hydrogens, four more, so we have a total of 12 electrons in this system, and this shows the Lewis structure for that particular compound. The three carbon member of the alkenes is called propene, or sometimes called propylene. It has the chemical formula 
C3, H6. And it has a total of 18 electrons. So this is the Lewis structure. We notice the general C double bond C of the alkene. And then we can also think of it as taking ethylene and replacing one of the hydrogens with a methyl group. If we replace one of the hydrogen atoms of ethylene with a fluorine atom, we end up with fluoroethylene. We see that since each fluorine contributes seven valence electrons, the two carbons together will contribute eight electrons, and then one each from each of the three hydrogens, we end up with a total of 18 electrons, and we can satisfy the duet rule for each hydrogen and the octet rule for the fluorines and the carbons, so long as we maintain the carbon-carbon double bond. We generally don't want to involve fluorine in double bonds. There are occasions where we'll make double bonds, but that's not very common. And it almost will never happen between fluorine and carbon. So if we have a molecule like this, we want to make a carbon-carbon double bond. It's very common, rather than try to attempt a carbon-fluorine double bond, which virtually never happens. If we try to add a second fluorine atom to ethylene, we have three different possible locations where we could put the second fluorine. So you could put it here, you could put it to replace this hydrogen, or you could put it to replace this hydrogen. And in each case, we would end up with a distinct compound that had different chemical properties. In any of the cases, we'll see that we have a total of 24 electrons that we have to allocate around the system. And since we know that we're working with alkenes, we're going to have a carbon-carbon double bond in the center. For this particular isomer, we name it as 1,1-difluoroethylene. The reason for 1,1 one, one is we have two carbons, and we always name it so that we have the lowest possible number. Since both of the fluorines are on the same carbon, we call this carbon number one. And since there's two fluorines, we call it difluoro. So this is 1,1-difluoroethylene. Here is the second way to allocate the two fluorines. So we have this fluorine is attached to one carbon atom. This fluorine is attached to the second one. So we call this, this is one fluoro, two fluoro. So, so we call it one, two difluoro. Now the second peculiarity about the way they're arranged here, we notice that both of the fluorine atoms are on the same side of this carbon-carbon double bond. So if we imagine the bond going along the stick here. We notice that both the fluorines are above the line as opposed to below it. So since they're both on the same side, we call this the cis isomer. So the full name for this compound would be cis 1,2-difluoroethylene. Another thing to keep in mind here is that we have different ways of allocating the fluorines so we notice that unlike resonance structures, in, fluor in resonance structures, the atoms stay the same, but we move the electrons around to different locations. And if we can do that in more than one possible location, we have multiple resonance structures. Here, we're not just moving the electrons, we're actually moving individual atoms. And when we can move individual atoms into a unique position to get different chemical properties, we call those things isomers. So we've seen two of the isomers for the difluoroethylene so far, we've seen 1,1-difluoro and cis-1,2-difluoroethylene. This is the third and final way to allocate our two fluorine atoms onto an ethylene molecule. So again, fluorine here is attached to the first carbon. This fluorine is attached to the second carbon. But now notice that if we use the stick to straw line along the double bond between the two carbon atoms. One fluorine is above the stick and the second one is below the stick. Since they are on opposite sides, they are across the bond from each other, we call this the trans isomer. So this particular molecule is trans 1,2-difluoroethylene. 
In organic chemistry, when we have a carbon atom connected to oxygen by a single bond, and then the oxygen is connected to a hydrogen, we call this class of compounds alcohols. Here we have the simplest of the alcohols, which goes by several names. Now we notice we have a CH3 group here, and we had said before that's called a methyl group. So therefore, this is sometimes called methyl alcohol. More commonly, it's called methanol. Its common name is wood alcohol. Now, it's important, this is not the alcohol that people often drink. You should not intentionally drink wood alcohol. If it is accidentally consumed, it is poisonous, it can cause blindness and death. So you definitely would never want to drink this. So this is methanol. So the chemical formula is ch 3 OH. We typically write the OH at the end to remind us that we have an alcohol. For the make the chemical structure, the uh, Lewis structure, each oxygen has six electrons, each carbon has four, that gives a total of 10, and then we have four hydrogens for a total of 14 electrons. We can satisfy the octet rule and the duet rules by connecting all the atoms by single bonds, and we're left with two lone pairs on the oxygens. These lone pairs on oxygen are responsible for some of the chemical reactivity of methanol and the other alcohols. In organic chemistry, it is probably not an exaggeration to say that the single most useful class of compounds in organic synthesis and organic chemistry in general are the alcohols. The next member of the alcohol family is ethyl alcohol. Just as we said a CH3 group is called a methyl group, when we have a two carbon group, a C2H5 group, this group here, that is called an ethyl group. Therefore, this is ethyl alcohol. It's an ethyl alcohol because we have an OH group attached directly to a carbon. It's also called ethanol or green alcohol. This is the alcohol that is the active ingredient in beverages such as beer, wine, whiskey, gin, vodka. So, it also has tremendous importance in organic synthesis beyond being used as a beverage and a popular intoxicant. Its chemical formula is C2H5OH. Reminder that we put the OH at the end to remind us that we have an alcohol because the OH is often called an alcohol group when it's attached directly to carbon. In this particular compound, each carbon atom contributes four valence electrons, so that gives us eight. Six more from the oxygen gives us 14. And then we notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six hydrogens. So that gives us a total of 20 electrons, and we can allocate them uh, around the thing. Oh, we left something off. So even just kind of shows it in putting our electrons in there, we have violated the octet rule. So we have to put, we got to put the lone pair of electrons in for oxygen. It's very important. So, so it's a good example of making sure that you satisfy the octet rule for all the atoms, or in the duet rule for hydrogen. So this gives us the accurate structure, finally, uh, Lewis structure for ethanol.